Hello, Hello. Shane, how are you? I'm good. How are you, bro? How's it going? Are you back home? Uh, you know, I'm bored, but uh, you know, staying safe, staying healthy. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Doing fine. Staying here in isolation. I had to shave my nice. head because I, <laughs> I, I can't go anywhere. And so the only reason, the only, the only way to do that was cutting myself. So yeah, here we are. How how's how are you dealing with the coronavirus right now? How's that? Um, I mean, well, just now, just trying to be safe as possible. You know, staying at the house. Uh, not really trying to expose myself to the to the virus in too many places, and um, um, you know, other than that, trying to do some core workouts here, trying to run, trying to get on the bike, trying to do some stuff just to try to stay in some type of game shape if we come back anytime soon. So um, yeah. that's really what's going on in my world. How about you? Uh, yeah, the same thing. I, I, either I'm not working out, <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> playing video games, uh, you know, reading some books, uh, writing some articles, but. All is good. Everybody's staying yeah. at home here in Greece. So, yeah, it's pretty much everybody's on lockdown. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'll, see, we'll see what happens. Hopefully, in the next few weeks, things yeah. get better. Um, how, how's the situation different than in the States than it was in Turkey when you were back, uh, back there? Um, I mean, they're actually pretty similar. Um, you know, we have a curfew down here in the States. We have a curfew in Miami from like 10 to 5 a.m. Um, in, Cur in, in, in Turkey, they're having like mandatory 48 hour lockdowns on the weekend to try to prevent people from, um, you know, going out and contracting the virus. So it's pretty similar. I mean, my life is very similar, just at the house all day, every day. So mm -hmm. it's, it really doesn't matter where in the world I am currently because everybody's kind of shut down in the same kind of way. So, yeah, um, sure. there's no huge difference between, you know, Miami right now and Istanbul actually. What about what about your daily schedule? Like when you were back in Turkey, it was game time. It was game every day, yeah. practices, workouts. Now you're currently at home. Just what's what's your daily schedule look like? Yeah, um, I mean, when the season's going, you know, you have practice every day. If you don't have a game, you have one off day a week, and there's just kind of like this rhythm that you get into, that your body gets used to, that your sleep schedule gets used to, and um, You just, you know, go along with it and you join it. But now, since there's literally nothing, nothing to do, like you have no scheduled appointments, you have no scheduled this, you can't go to restaurants, you can't do anything. I'm just kind of like letting my body control the entire process. Like if I'm sleepy, I sleep. If I want to work out, I work out. If I stay up all night till six in the morning, then that's just what happens. So, um, I mean, it's a huge difference. And, you know, obviously I love basketball, but I've never – like miss practice so much in my life. Yeah. Like I'm actually sitting here like missing going to practice. So yeah. it's, it's, getting, that, that, it's getting hard. That was going to be my my next question. Like many NBAers have said that they haven't even touched the ball since uh, yeah. the NBA since got suspended. Have you have you been able to practice with the basketball? Or um, well, or I, had, I haven't been able to actually get into a gym. So it's been like three and a half weeks since I touched the ball. Well, I don't know exactly you know, what type of performance I would put on if we had to play in a game in, you know, two weeks. But I'm pretty sure yeah. it wouldn't be too good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Given, given the fact that the coronavirus uh, spread last in the U.S., do you feel like the country could have handled the situation differently? Or how, how do you feel about that? Um, I believe so. I think, you know, with the U.S. being so populated and being such a big space um, that we should have had, you know, um, taking it more serious from the beginning. Yeah. I think in the in the beginning of it, you know, the States, we kind of feel like, you know, nothing can really touch us. You know, we have this, we have that, we have the best medical and this and that and the third, but I don't think we took this virus serious enough. So we kept, kept stuff open longer than it probably should have, let people travel longer than we probably should have. And, uh, you know, now we have the most cases in the world. So um, I think they just should have taken it more serious from the beginning. Um, But other than that, I think they've done the necessary things that they needed to do along the way to try to stop the spread. But um, now it's here. So it's kind of just a, a bad situation for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Ho hopefully everybody follows the experts' advice and stays at home in lockdown, lockdown. You know, and things get better soon because this, this situation is very difficult for everybody right now. Yeah. It's, it's crazy, bro. Are you, are you missing the EuroLeague season? I'm like I'm really missing the EuroLeague season now. Like once, you know, even even in the summer times when you have 
time to like relax and you know and enjoy family and enjoy vacations and enjoy just chilling uh yeah. you don't really miss it because it's like you're off time you worked hard for 10 months and then you get like you know a month and a half two months off but now like with this whole thing going on we worked from let's say august until the end of february and then everything just kind of stopped it was just about to get good like it was just about to get into yeah. the playoffs it was about to get into all the tough battles all the tough matches all the things that really matter and then it's just like all right everybody you know go home and call you back when whenever we have an answer for you and it's kind of just like it leaves you wanting more so i yeah. i miss the season i miss being in turkey i miss you know i miss a lot about it so and, and especially for you guys that you were considered yeah. favorites you were first place exactly especially having the season we were having just yeah you know everybody playing at a high level winning all the games the atmosphere at sinan at them like mm -hmm. it was just another level of you know fun it was just you know it's it's always fun to win so when you're winning you know basically every single game you're playing and everybody's playing well the team has been together for two years so we're all good friends you know it was it was definitely yeah, absolutely difficult mm -hmm. uh, we're currently waiting for for what will happen with the euro league what will happen with basketball in general with sports yeah. yet yet alone um wh where's your mindset right now about what will happen in the future this season etc um you know uh, I'm kind of just in the same boat as everybody. I'm just kind of sitting waiting to see what happens. But if I if I had to be honest and sit here and tell you if I believe that the season is going to come back, I would say I don't I don't truly believe so. Yeah. Um I just think you know, do I want it to come back? Of course, I would love for it to come back. I just think for so many reasons it's just very very difficult in order for the season to come back mm -hmm. because one, you know, if if guys haven't played organized basketball in two three months what yeah. kind of performances do, do people expect when we when we were able to get back out there and it's going to take some time obviously for you to have like a some sort of training camp three weeks right. uh, practice right. because you haven't practiced in so long so right that's going so to be it's, tough. it's a few reasons but i just think even even with the virus itself i feel like the virus is still getting you know worse before it's starting to get better so i don't really see stuff coming back anytime soon and I think eventually we'll just run out of time and not yep. be able to you know complete it but hope hope is still there you know I still hope mm -hmm. we can get back to it I hope I'm having faith I'm praying on it yeah. so I hope I hope at one point we'll be able to get back out there mm -hmm. yeah, obviously, obviously we'll have we'll have more Instagram live shows you are the first one since you were yeah. having like a, an incredible season an MVP type season um, um, with other Euro players as well so but as far as you're concerned, where do the rest of the players stand on that matter? Like, do they think that, we that uh, EuroLeague is coming back? Do they want EuroLeague to come back? Do they think that it's safer to not come back? How are they feeling about um, it? I would say it's, it's kind of spread out through everybody. But I know the general consensus is everybody wants the season to come back. Um, you know, everybody wants to be able to finish. Everybody loves to play. Everybody loves to compete. Yes. But I know everybody would like to see some type of closure to it. But I just think some people are being more um more like straightforward with the matter and just being like you know it was a great season but Greece has already canceled the season Russia's already canceled the yep. season you know there's Italy so even if you know they're trying to bring back the Euro league there's already been so many leagues that have been like just all right whatever cancel the season everybody stay safe and we'll come back next year and try to do a big or whatever um so it's it's really widespread but you know, I think majority of the people hope and pray that we still can get some type of resolution to the season, yeah. even if it doesn't, if it doesn't look possible at the moment. Mm -hmm. A possible scenario for that, uh, at least um, according to EuroLeague CEO, Jordi, Mr. Jordi Bertomeu, he said that the goal is to complete this year's uh, EuroLeague competition. He said that a possible scenario for that to happen is to have like a short tournament and play in one city. Um, how, how do you feel? How do you feel about that? Uh, would it be something that interest you if you could play and if everybody is safe and that's in that um, I mean yeah it, it's it's interesting definitely um I just you know a part of you wants to get back out there and you want to compete and you want to and you want to play um but I just don't think it's fair you know to anybody to to be put in that situation and expect you know 
the level of quality that the Euro League actually is. You know, I think yeah. one of the best things about the Euro League is the playoffs and mm -hmm. countries being able to, like pe people from different countries being able to travel with their team and you support them in places that they maybe had never been before or, you know, a, a team qualifying for the Final Four and then all the, like, the people who love the team from the country or other countries can fly out to one location yeah. Yeah. and cheer for the team. And, you know, for the fans, I don't think it was obviously fair. And for the players itself, it's just – it's it's extremely difficult, you know, from not playing basketball for three months to jumping into, like, playoff basketball or – yeah, you to know, a short yeah. tournament, a mini tournament. Yeah, yeah whatever like, can happen. Even even the last six games of the year league this season were going to be so important for like ten, twelve teams. For the playoffs. It's like yeah. yeah, like there were so many teams in the playoff race and so many teams that could still get in and you know you know, we weren't even solidified at the number one seed still. We still had to play and still had to win games. So um you know, I just think for everybody involved, it's just kind of unfair. Obviously, I think everybody would like to have some type of conclusion to it. But I just think in a lot of ways, it's unfair to everybody involved. And who knows how it goes. But, I mean, that's just how I feel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you read the, today's news, but in Spain for the ACB tournament, the Spanish League, uh, yeah, the teams agreed that for those that didn't read the news, uh, the teams agreed to complete the season with a 12-team tournament in one single venue. Uh, the final decision will be made next month on May, on May the 31st, uh, based on the situation of the coronavirus in the country as well. Um, would it be something that you may want to see in the Turkish League? You said they will determine on May 31st? Uh, no, on May 31st they, they will decide if they are actually going to play it, because then they'll have to go until, uh, I think, mid-July, mid something like that. Mm. Um, I mean... Like, it, it kind of goes the same line with the EuroLeague. I think people would like to, to see that and like to do that. But then you're thinking about it. We stopped playing. I think the last game was March 15th. So yeah. you're, you're saying not playing any basketball games for two and a half months and then going and jumping into a, like, winner-takes-all type of situation. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, there's something to be said about, like, having a rhythm, having a chemistry in basketball. I think... This year, FS, as a team, we were so good because our chemistry and because we were in such a good rhythm. And then you get out of that rhythm and out of that chemistry for two and a half months, and then you want us to jump back in, yeah. or three and a half months, and then jump back in and continue to be the FS that we were. Like, I just think that's very difficult. It won't be the same basketball. It won't be the same results for sure. And I just don't know if that way you truly get the champion of the season. Because I don't know if, like, the best team or the team that's supposed to win that, I don't think that team comes out of that situation in the majority of competitions. Yeah, in my opinion, in my opinion, at least uh, how I see it, is that especially with you guys in the EuroLeague, that you were, you know, you were leading the team uh, to a 24-4 and record. Uh, you know, you had, uh, you were considered one of the favorites to win it all. And so I think that if EuroLeague does come back, that every team starts from the same point, at least the ones right. that will be in the playoffs. Because... They haven't played basketball. You haven't played basketball in like so long, and I think that right. the starting point for for each team is is the same. Uh, yeah. Do you agree with that? Do you think that if Euroleague does in fact come back, does that twenty four and four record go away? Uh, I'm I don't think it can. I think you know all the work that we put in, all the games that we've had, has to stay in, intact, and you know we have to continue to be in first place. The the stats, the I think everything should stay the same. Because realistically, you know, you postpone the season. It's like you not like you canceled it and started a new one. So I think everything has to stay the same. The records have to stay the same. The teams that have to that, – I think, I think that's what makes it difficult. I think the teams that still need to play each other still need to play each other. Because I know us, we had, I think, four of our last six games were against, like, playoff competing teams. Like, we played Valencia the day of the game. It got canceled. So – we still have Valencia, we still play Panathinaikos, we still play mm -hmm. Kimki, we play, still play Finner. Um, I think we had St. Petersburg and somebody else in there, but mm -hmm. I don't remember if they were a playoff team. But, um, you know, we still had to play against teams that were still fighting for playoffs, and I think there's so many things that can happen. You know, you can drop from second to fifth in a, in a heartbeat, so... You know, it's mm -hmm. it's still something that needs to be played out. I think everybody still deserves a fair chance to get into the playoffs. So, yeah, um, I think it's just really difficult.
realistically, would you, would you say that you prefer to have a short tournament like that or cancel the season? Because I think that it's either one of the two options because then it will be like way into the summer and it won't be possible yeah. to have all the games. Um, I think if it can happen sooner than later, I think people would prefer, and myself, I would prefer the tournament just to, you know, have to have to, to be able to say, okay, at least we have to finish yeah. this season. And who knows who wins, who knows how it all turns out, but at least we can have some type of closure on the whole coronavirus mm -hmm. season because that's what this is going to be calculated as forever. So mm -hmm. I would prefer that. But if it goes like another few months, like if they're in, into the middle of June and they're like, all right, we're going to come back in the middle of July for a two-week tournament, then it's like, all right, it's yeah. been four and a half months. Like, yeah, yeah, I just need to cancel it at this point. Mm -hmm. So I just think that it goes off of, you know, the developments with the virus and all that. How, how unlucky would you feel, like, individually and on a team level if, if your league gets cancelled? Because of the season you were having and the season that you were having as a whole, as a team. I mean, I just think we are we 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 already feel unlucky because I feel like, like I said, when you get into a rhythm like that, sometimes it's just some team's year. It's just it's just their year to do mm -hmm. yeah. to to do it, you know. And I really, truly, really a hundred million percent feel like it was just our year, and um, all of us were playing at a high level. We had so many things happen with Bryant's injury. You know, I had an injury for a couple of weeks. Vasa has been fighting through injuries every week. Roddy, you know, Chris had a whole wrist thing for a while. Adrian, we had so many people with with little injuries, but we still fought through that. We still stayed together. We still carried each other through the worst of times. And then literally the last game before the whole coronavirus thing happened, everybody was like healthy and in good shape. Brian was back. Adrian was back. Chris was back healthy. Vasa was healthy. I was healthy. Roddy, Pruno, James, like, Everybody, everybody was healthy. And then the season gets cut short. And they say, oh, we'll postpone it. And at that time, it was for like two and a half weeks. So we were like, all right, everybody just stay in shape. Yeah. And we're going to come back in two and a half weeks. And yeah. we're going to just continue doing what we've been doing. And then it gets postponed for longer. Um, so I just think we all feel really, we all feel really unlucky right now. Mm -hmm. Because we all truly believe that there was not one team that could, you know, to knock us off in a in a seriously tough battle, I don't think any team was going to be able to knock us off the way we had been going. Um, but now, obviously, who knows? So, yeah, uh, you talked about uh, the fact that you guys uh, had great chemistry together. Uh, have you had any contact with your teammates and coaches back back in Turkey? How are you guys uh, yeah. connected over over the? Yeah, course? yeah, we're staying connected. Um, you know, we have a players chat. Um, and everybody checks in every once in a while and sees how everybody's doing, wishing us well if we're back home. Everybody's trying to stay in shape. So um, I mean, we're, we're still taking it serious. We're still trying to keep hope alive. We're still trying to, you know, be positive as a club to try to get back and work on this thing that we had going on. But um, we're all realistic in saying that, you know, safety is the most important thing. So take the necessary precautions. And, um, I mean, we'll just all sit here and see what happens. Mm -hmm. take, take me back to can you take me back to your record breaking night of uh, scoring 49 points was there, was there any you know like any special thing that happened during the day something different or before the game or after the game that you may want to share <laughs> hey, right, I'm going to be real real honest I was extremely upset going into that game <laughs> really I was very upset going into that game I don't know which website it might have been you guys. It might have been. <laughs> Somebody posted like a, a MVP ladder. And I had just came off of, of, of like a couple of good games in a row. And I think I was first in the league in scoring yeah. and like second in the league in PIR. And there was a, a, a MVP ladder and I was fifth. And I was like, how? Like, how is this possible? When I'm leading the league in scoring – Team is in, I think we we're in like second place at the time, maybe still first. Leading the league in scoring, leading the league or, or top three in PIR, but I'm last or last on the MVP ladder. I was, and that was I during that day? It was that day it came out. I was oh. hot. Like I was very, I didn't feel good about that. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to make a statement tonight. And then boom. So, well, um, 
Yeah, I mean, it was a crazy day, but that's what happened before the game. I'm, I'm pretty sure that was us because we do the, the MVP ladder, but I'm, I'm right. not sure, but I, I don't have the, the ladder. <laughs> I think it was. Week in front of me, so, so I'm, not, I'm not sure where we, we had placed you or something. Yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, but, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I think that's, I think it was you guys. And I think, I mean, I'm pretty sure it happened on the, the day. Maybe it was the day before. But I'm pretty sure it happened the day of the game. And I was just like, oh, this is not good. So I want to go out there and make a statement tonight. So there you go. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I appreciate okay. it. So, so, so in many people's eyes, including mine, you, you had like the best individual EuroLeague season we've ever seen in the modern era of the, of the EuroLeague. I know you are very confident, uh, but even for your standards, did you expect to have that kind of season? I don't think you can ever expect to have that kind of season. I'm like you said, I'm a very confident dude, but I mean, realistically, I would expect myself to have a good year. But I would think I would say the thing that to me is the most impressive about what I have been doing is just the percentages from the field. Like you can go out there and score twenty points every night and shoot thirty five percent from three and all yeah. that. But I I don't even know how, but the ball every time I shot it this year just felt good. Like it just felt good. <laughs> Everything felt good, and that was that's another thing of just like it it felt like it was our year because I mean as a team we felt good, but individually I just felt like it didn't matter where I was shooting from, who was guarding me, who we were playing against. I just felt good about everything. So mm-hmm. um, I mean I definitely expected to have a good season myself, but I would say I definitely. You were surprised at yourself as well. Um, I wouldn't say surprised because I believe that I'm capable of a lot, even a lot more. But I would say I was I was pleasantly, yeah, I guess you can't say surprised. <laughs> surprised with how well I shot yeah. the ball all season, yeah. for sure. So so now you've been, uh, you've been with FS for two years, uh, the longest you've been with one team in your career. Um, how has the team helped you in your career, especially this year? Um, well, I think that the best thing that coach does and the best thing that the team does, it, it allowed me to completely and utterly just be myself. It was not like, all right, and this is something that coach doesn't do. He doesn't bring you in and put you in like a box. He kind of lets you go out there and he plays and he tries to let you see what he tries to see what works for the team and what doesn't. And You know, at the beginning of last season, I wasn't really necessarily working with the team. I wasn't playing a lot. I wasn't getting a lot of minutes. I didn't have a big responsibility. But then, you know, I had a game where he saw something. I had a great game, and he's like, okay, now we see how it works. And now we see why we brought this guy here. So we're just going to let him do his thing in that way. And then I I took off, and I've had the the last year that I've had. So um, I think being there and finding myself and being comfortable – being who I am, I think they have a huge part in me, you know, becoming the guy that I've become today. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was that was last year, that moment you were talking about, right? Yeah, it was last year. Okay, so then so then you chose to return uh, to FS this summer uh, and have a major role in a caliber, you know, in, you know, in a championship caliber team. Um, what's your mindset for this summer? Would a more concrete NBA offer with more playing time, you know, make you think of an NBA return? Or are you happy and willing to stay in Europe? Well, I'm very, very, very happy in Europe. I'm very happy in Europe. And, you know, in this off time, I've even sat here with my family that is down here with me in Miami. And I've sat here, like, I really genuinely love playing in Europe. Like, I have a love for it. It's, you know, NBA is great. And the NBA is amazing. And, you know, that's the top level. But there's something special about playing in Europe that not many people understand or not many people can feel unless you're going through it. Um, But at the end of the day, you know, as a competitor, you can't sit here and say if a team offers you 30 minutes a night in the NBA to go play alongside this guy and try to get this team into the playoffs and start making some noise, uh, there's a part of you that wants to go and take on that challenge, you know? so. Um, there's still many things that I would like to accomplish in my career. And, you know, I was on the way to accomplishing some of those things this year in your league, I believe. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if it continues, hopefully we can still accomplish some of those things. But um, uh, I don't really – I really can't answer that question in any way because I don't know 
what will happen. Like, I don't know. I think it just is a feel thing. I just have to go with my heart. I have to go with my, you know, whatever feels best to me. But right now, I'm, I'm very, very, very happy playing in FS, very happy playing in Europe. Um, but I wouldn't sit here and say, all right, I'm never going back to the NBA because that would probably be false. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. So we'll see what happens. Sm small parenthesis, I just got a text uh, from uh, our editor who does the, the MVP ladders, the MVP ladder, and he told me that it was the 10th tenth, uh, tenth round of the EuroLeague, and you were in fact placed number six in the MVP yeah. ladder. <laughs> but, exactly. but, it was, but it was, but he says that it was like a, a, a three-way tie because um, Everybody was on the same level. That's what that, that's what uh, he said. Like on the same, like you were what? considered third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, something like that. Ah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so whatever it was, I didn't like it that day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it. Yeah. And you responded with forty nine. So maybe we should do it again. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Okay. Mm -hmm. Go, going back to the NBA, um, when you were in Boston, because we received some some uh, some fun questions from uh, fans in Boston. Do you feel like you? you could have played more and maybe, you know, deserved, uh, deserved more chances? Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel like I, I, I wanted to play more. But I think when you look at the situation that, that it was in Boston, I just think even if they wanted to play me more, it was just a tough situation because of all the players that we already had. You know, you have Kyrie, you have Smart, you have Terry Rozier, you have Jason Tatum, you have Jalen Brown. And these guys are all guards that can yeah, the play. Team was yeah, so it was a packed backcourt, and um, you know, obviously, I, any any player feels like he should play more minutes. So I'm gonna sit here. And I'm not gonna sit here and say, like, oh no, I don't think I should have played more. But um, you know, it, it is just a situation that you have to learn from. And obviously, all the guys that were playing more than me are unbelievable players in their in their own right. So yep. um, Boston was a great experience, and you know, I went there and I played my role, and I learned a lot of things, and I got better as a player, and. Uh, you know, I move forward and, you know, continue to grow. Mm -hmm. Be before we get into the, the rapid fire questions and the fun questions, uh, and now that we're talking about the NBA, uh, I recently used a caption, I don't know if you remember, and I wrote uh, Europeans taking over the NBA because, it was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because there were three, three European guys who were having, like, breakout seasons. Uh, yeah. I, know you, I know you found that, uh, that, that happened <laughs> extreme. Many other players, especially Americans, found it also extreme. But my question is, how do you think a potential game of like the best European players or the best players that are foreigners in the U.S. and against Team USA would play out in the NBA? Like if, let's say, an All-Star game was, was made like that? Um, I mean, I think it would be a very, very high-level matchup. And, you know, if you take the top 12 European players and you take the top 12 NBA uh, American players, I think it will be a very tough game. And I think there is a lot of, you know, top level Euro European players in the NBA. But I think sheer numbers alone is just, you know, for every year, one European superstar, there's three, in, you know, three American superstars. So I just think yeah. there's more, more people, more Americans at least that are in the NBA than, you know, the European superstars. Not not to say that the European guys aren't great players. Antetokounmpo yeah. is arguably top four, top five. Um, and then what Doncic is doing at his, at a, at his age is yeah. sick. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's definitely a top level. Jokic, you know, Bogdanovich is nice. You know, there's a lot of guys. Sabonis. Yeah. So there's a lot of guys that, you Porzingis. know. Porzingis. Yeah, George Ingus. Yeah. You know, so there's there's a lot of guys that are, that are playing at a very high level. But I think, you know, when you throw that team out there, then you just throw LeBron, KD, yeah. Damian Lillard, James Harden. Oh, wow. Like, it just, you get over yeah. overpowered at some point. I, I think it would be interesting, though, if, if they had the Rising Stars, uh, the Rising Stars Challenge, uh, like they do, like Team World versus Team USA, if they yeah. had the same thing for the All-Star game. I think it would. Yeah, I mean that's that's definitely good. something they should they should do, and maybe one time put the All Star game in Europe somewhere. That might be cool. Yeah, that that'd be interesting as well. Yeah. That'd um, be mm -hmm. uh, then a final question before we get to the uh, I've collected some uh, fun questions and some rapid fire questions like toughest opponent, uh, toughest player to guard, etc. Uh, we're gonna do that once you answer the following. Um, obviously, 
this year you didn't play with the Turkish national team. Um, but how do you approach this new adventure? How do you feel about it? Have you set any goals uh, for yourself and the Turkish national team? Um, yeah, I mean, definitely everything I, I, I sign up for, I definitely have a goal in mind. I don't just do anything just to do it. So, um, I, I mean, I feel uh, I feel very strongly about playing with the Turkish national team. It's something that I, I signed up for because the, of the love and the, and the amount of support I, I received from Turkey. Uh, so it's something that I still obviously would like to do. And obviously the pre-Olympic tournament got canceled this, this summer, mm -hmm. uh, but hopefully they have it next summer. Um, and hopefully they have the Olympics next summer because, you know, I think – we have a very talented team. I think obviously we all have to play together first in order to see yes. how well we actually are. But I think when you look on, on us, you look at us on paper, I think you see a very strong squad um, mm -hmm. that can do some damage. And, you know, they've never, or we have never qualified for the Olympics. So I think that's the goal. Um, obviously the tournament this summer would have been difficult playing against Canada in Canada, having to beat them in their yes. country in order to go to the Olympics. But, um, you know, it's just like a very tough road game. So, you know, I, I wasn't really phased by it. But, you know, unfortunately, it doesn't get to happen. And, I mean, we'll see what happens going Hopefully forward. But next year. I think, yeah, I think there's definitely a, a, a strong chance for us to be able to go out there and, you know, qualify for the Olympics, and I think that's, that's the main goal right there. You know, no team has ever done it, so being the first team that qualifies for the Olympics for, you know, the country of Turkey would be just another mind-blowing experience along this whole journey, so that'd be cool. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to get through some uh, quick rapid-fire questions. Uh, yeah. if, if you want to ask anything, guys, uh, please uh, check our stories because we'll have uh, more EuroLeague players coming up in the next few days. That are going to be here with us. Uh, so, f first question, uh, first fun question: toughest opponent, like a player. Oh, uh, toughest opponent, like a player. Yeah, you've ever faced. So that one specific it. player. Yeah. I would say the toughest opponent is Mike, Mr. Michael James. Mike James, Mr. From Mr. Mr. Natural. Mr. Natural. Okay. Toughest player to guard. Mr. Mike. <laughs> Mr. Mike. Okay. F favorite arena to play at in Europe? Sinan Erdem Dome. E except uh, uh, the... Um, favorite place to play in outside of... Well, thus far, early in my career, I would say uh, Fernando Buesa Arena. Mm -hmm. Just because of the history there. Played there a whole year. Final Four there. It's a lot of, a lot of good mm -hmm. memories there. In the NBA? NBA, favorite place to play? Uh, I would say... I would say probably playing in in Oakland, where the Warriors used to play. In Oakland, okay. It was, it was, a, it was an unbelievable arena. Got super loud. Obviously, that's when they were, like, playing at their high level. So, those are always <laughs> super fun, yeah. What about the Stable Center in uh, Madison Square Garden, New York? I mean, it was always cool. It's always cool playing in Madison Square Garden, but when I played there, it was literally the worst year of my career, basketball-wise. Um, so I don't really have great memories yeah. at that <laughs> at that place. <laughs> um, and Staples Center, I've always been on the East Coast team, so I only get to go there like once yeah. a year, twice a year. So, I mean, it's always amazing playing there, but um, I feel like I've had better times playing in, in Oakland mm -hmm. against the, the Warriors because they were – the top team. And yeah, top yeah during, their, during their dynasty, yeah. yeah. Favorite European uh, city to visit? Uh, outside of Istanbul? Yeah. I live there? Yeah. Uh, I would say Barcelona. Barcelona in Spain, okay. F favorite EuroLeague player to watch? Favorite EuroLeague player to watch? Hmm. They're really tough questions, man. <laughs> tough Tough question. Favorite player to watch in the EuroLeague? I would say I actually really like watching Campazzo play. Yeah, he, he's, he's extraordinary, yeah. Yeah, I really like watching him play. Mm -hmm. So I will say Campazzo. Favorite moment of your career so far? That's Favorite another moment. Huh? That's another tough one. 
Yeah. Uh, that's another tough one. Um, favorite moment of my career, I would say very single moment when Adrian – Adrian Mormon hit that three last year against Bar- uh, Barcelona in game five, um, like on the on the left wing. When he hit that shot, that's mm-hmm. probably my favorite moment. Just that moment, knowing we were going to the Final Four for the first time in a very long time mm-hmm. for our, our club was, was probably my most satisfying moment mm-hmm. that I've had. One underrated part of your game. One underrated part of my game, I would say I'm low-key a solid defender. Everybody says the size thing, like, is, is a huge issue, but I really feel like I'm a really solid defender, like very solid. So I would say, I would say defense is very underrated in my game. Mm-hmm. Uh, who would you choose for EuroLeague's best starting five? <sighs> right, currently? <laughs> currently, yeah. Not yeah, including can... myself. Um, I don't know. You can include yourself if you want. All right. So I'm on there <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on there. Um, and this is get this gets tough because it's but, like but some message just uh, just uh, wrote you are a great defender. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I would say. It's it's tough to answer this question because it's like you need to build out a team based on you know, who you have on your team, if that makes sense. Who you have, you, you mean FS? No, so like, if I choose myself on the team, then obviously if I was just going player by player, then I would just say the guys, but you need the team to fit as well. So you need guys that work well together. Uh, that, that's up to you, that's up to you. Like, whatever, whatever you think works best, like chemistry-wise. Yeah, that's tough. I'm gonna do it without any FS players, without and I'm gonna do it players. without myself. Okay, okay. All right. So if I did it that way, it makes it a lot easier because I would say Larkin, Mitchich, Simon, <laughs> Singleton, <laughs> and Dunstan. FS is starting five, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, but if I did if it without have, any FS without players, you. yeah, without I would do any FS player without FS and without um, myself. So at the one, I'll have Mike, Mr. Mike, mm-hmm. Mike James. At the two, actually, I'm going to put one FS player on there. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put Mitch. I'm going to put Vasa. Just because he wrote that? <laughs> nah, nah, just because Vasa is very, very, like, he can do it, literally everything on the court. Yeah, yeah, of course. And he's a big guard, so he can guard anybody, one through four, basically. And he can obviously pass the ball very well and shoot the ball well and do all the things well. So I would choose Vasa. So we have exactly. Mike and Vasa. Without Mike and Vasa? No, we have Mike and Vasa. Oh, yeah. We have Mike. So we have Mike. We have Vasa. At the three, I would choose Will Clyburn. Healthy. Yeah, of course. Um, at the four, I would probably choose Anthony Randolph. Mm-hmm. And at the five, I would probably choose... A tough one. I would probably go with Davies, Brandon Davies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, like to, I like to run. Huh? From Barcelona, Brandon Davies. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. I like to run. I like to play fast. And I think that team can play very fast, shoot a lot of threes. But they also have great size, scoring, clutch. Mm-hmm. I think that team will be pretty, pretty good. Besides yourself, most clutch EuroLeague player? Um... Currently playing, most EuroLeague player. For this season or, like, currently playing that's still a player? Currently playing in the EuroLeague, uh, most clubs EuroLeague play. Like, the guy... Who I would say... Last shot. I would say Sergio Yu is probably... Mm-hmm. He hit so many... When I played that year in Spain, I, so mm-hmm. many shots. Yeah. I was, like, 23 years old. I didn't know much about, you know, European basketball yet. Yeah. And, you know, I, I had seen his name a couple of times. Living in the states, like who is? Yeah, this because guy? because he was one of the guys who who were never like, went over. Yeah, he never went over, and right. everybody was like, he should be in the NBA. Right, right. So yeah. I'm coming over here thinking like, ah, uh, you know, I was in the NBA. This guy, I don't really know much about him. So like, I'm playing defense on him, but I'm not playing defense defense on him. The first yeah. couple of times we played, and he just every shot just splash. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, what the? <laughs> and then it gets late game, and then. 
Like, I had a Spanish coach at the time, Cito Alonso, and he's telling me, like, this guy makes unbelievable shots in all yeah. clutch situations. Like, make sure you guard him. And I was like, all right, I got him. And then he'll yeah. still make a clutch shot on me. Yeah. I, like, I, I learned my lesson today. So <laughs> um, I would say him right now just mm-hmm. actually, you know what? I got to change it. I got to change it. Now that I actually <laughs> thought about it, because another guy has also hit clutch shots on me and been very clutch down the stretch, and he's, he's like a super, super legend. So yeah. I'm gonna say Spanulis, actually. Now Spanulis. that I thought about it, yeah. So we have Spanulis and Yul. Yeah, but I would okay. say Spanulis won for sure. Okay, okay. The yeah. best, the best trust talker you've ever played against. Like, was there anybody like who got on your nerves? Trash talker. Yeah. And trash, trash talker, but he doesn't really talk trash. But he's just like one of those like physical. Defenders that are always running into you. Uh, Bronco Lazic. Mm-hmm. Okay. He's just one of those guys who are just like, oh, God, bro. Like, relax. <laughs> He's just one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just always playing defense hard, always always getting up underneath you. Everywhere you're on the court, he's hitting you, bumping you, just being, like, annoying. So, like, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know him personally as a guy. He's probably yeah. a good dude. But yeah. on the court, he's like an annoying guy that just you don't want to play against. In general, do 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 players trash talk in Europe or only in the NBA or more actually in the NBA? It's more of a it's more of a thing in the NBA for sure. Not yeah. not so much in Europe. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, then another question like a what if scenario? Thumbs up or thumbs down on Euroleague having an All Star game? Thumbs up. Team Europe two, versus two Team thumbs Europe up versus Team there. World. Huh? Team Europe versus Team World. If I could put five thumbs up, I would do it. I think that would be super dope. For okay. sure. Um, I recently, I, I think I saw a live of yours, uh, and you said that your nicknames are uh, Sugar Shane and uh, Larry King. Uh, mm-hmm. Thumbs up or thumbs down on Insane Larry King as your nickname. I like it. Yeah? It's been it's used... Cool. Uh, in Greece, a lot. I don't know about yeah. the other Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely cool. I like it. I like mm-hmm. it a lot. It's cool. <laughs> okay. What type of music do you listen to before a game? Um, I usually listen to, like, some hype music. Uh, like, I listen to a lot of Lil Baby. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> a lot of guys like that. Just hype artists that can, you know, put me in a zone where Happy you know, I'm already game. feeling pretty good. Yeah, um, another one, and we're down to the last five. Uh, one Euroleague player you'd love to see in the NBA, current Euroleague player. And you think that the NBA, uh, you think that he, 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 the, his game suits uh, the NBA style of play. Hmm. One guy that I would like to see in the NBA right now. I'll say. I'll say Anthony Randall. Mm-hmm. I think his game suits the well NBA now. You know, a four four man athletic, six ten, can switch on defense, can shoot the three, block shots. You know, can dribble like a positionless kind of guy. So I would say probably him. What about Campazzo? Uh, yeah. I mean, I think he can definitely play in the NBA. I think you know he has a lot of qualities that you you like in a in a, I mean, for the NBA, at least, for a backup guard. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially if he's knocking down a shot. I don't know exactly yes. what he shot from three this year, but if he can start shooting his shot at a much, like, more consistent level and making it at, like, a 40% clip, yes. maybe he does already, but I don't think he does. But if he can, then I can I can definitely see it happening. Mm-hmm. Three major differences between your league and the NBA. Three major differences, athleticism, spacing, um, and attention. I would say attention. Mm -hmm. Um, And then another what if scenario, what if uh, if question. Would an elite EuroLeague team, besides Efes, make the NBA playoffs? Make the playoffs? 
First of all, it depends on which conference they're in, East or West. Yeah, that's true. Let's say, let's say for for the sake of the argument, uh, in the East. I think they're definitely fighting for that A spot. Yeah. So who would you say is the elite team? Barcelona, Real Madrid. Yeah, Tessica, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Madrid. Like these three. I think I think of the three, Barcelona has the best chance because they have the size mm-hmm. that you would need. You know, Miritich. Davies, you have the big, the bigs, and the size that you would need to to compete in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously you have the guard play, Delaney, uh, Kudic mm-hmm. is very nice. Yeah. Um, you know, if they had everybody healthy with Bengals, Huerta, yeah, Hanga uh, can defend at a very high level, can defend NBA players. Um, so I would say probably them. They so you would, think they'd, they'd the be on chance. the verge of? On the verge of yeah, the I think they'll they'll the be right race. there around 500, maybe a couple of games under okay. 500, fighting for you know a playoff spot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then finally, now that everybody is talking about uh, Michael Jordan's last dance, my question is simple: LeBron or MJ? Oh Jesus! <laughs> um, did you did you get to watch it yet? The first two episodes. I, I'm I'm not gonna watch it. Because I'm going to watch it eventually, but I'm not going to watch it like episode one. Episode ah, you two. want to watch it all together? Yeah, I don't want to have to wait. You're not afraid of the spoilers? Yeah, no. No. I won't. <laughs> if I see something on, I mean, but what is there really to, sp- I mean, there's certain behind the scenes stuff we haven't seen before, but yeah. I mean, who doesn't really know Michael Jordan's story, yeah, you know? Sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't want to watch one and two, then I have to wait a week to watch three and four. I just want to watch yeah. one sh- all the way straight, so... I have nothing but time now, so I'm sure I'll find a day where <laughs> yeah. I can just watch it all at once. Um, so, yeah. So, so, LeBron or MJ? I think that's tough, but I think you have to go MJ. He just, you know, yeah, six yeah. titles, six six and oh, hasn't lost, averaged 40 anytime he wanted. Yeah. Like, six think, MVPs. Yeah, just, just a different level, I think. <laughs> but this is my argument. I think LeBron James is the greatest all all around player built and yeah just all around best basketball player ever he de- literally yeah. does everything he'll be top 5 and probably yeah three, every every yeah 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 you know what i'm saying like yeah, realistically sure. rebounding assist and scoring he'll be top 5 yeah. in all of them so like to me that makes him the best basketball player because he scored, he's rebounded, and he's assisted, and he's won championships, MVPs. He's done everything. So you think that him. LeBron is actually like a better player, but Jordan had the better career? Yes, Jordan has had the best career and the best possible like journey through basketball that you could possibly have. So yeah, he, he changed he, the game. Yeah, he changed the game. He revolutionized the game. He made NBA a part of what it is today. Yeah, but a strictly basketball, strictly basketball. Mm-hmm. LeBron just does something that nobody has ever done for mm-hmm. for 15 years, 16 years. So Michael Jordan is the best killer dominating basketball player ever. Mm-hmm. Like, this is mine. I'm going to go win this and y'all can't yeah. say nothing to me. Yeah. But basketball player alone, based on how his body is and skills and IQ and all that, I would say LeBron. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, it's 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 a deep conversation for me. And your favorite basketball player ever, Allen Iverson. Yeah, that's that's not a question. That's, <laughs> that's just is what it is, and always will be. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, uh, that was it. If you if you don't have anything else to add, um, it was my pleasure having you on uh, first the first live show we did. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I hope you stay safe. Yeah, thank you, bro. And, it was uh, fun. And, yeah, uh, whatever else, we'll talk soon. Yeah, yeah. Hope you stay safe too, bro. Make sure you stay safe out there in Greece. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye, guys. Yeah, you too, bro. Bye-bye.